Hello everyone. This is my sixth video on sport diagnosis. Today I will show you a rare condition in a newborn. So this is the image of the newborn who was delivered in our institute and you can see this newborn is having the large size of the abdominal mass at the base of umbilicus and this mass is covered with a membranous sac and the content of this mass is intestine and the liver. So whenever a newborn is having the anterior abdominal wall defect at the base of umbilicus cord, what will be the clinical diagnosis? This look like a midline abdominal mass at the umbilicus cord which is covered with the membrane but this is the wall defect. So the diagnosis for this condition will be omphalocele and according to the size and the according to the herniated content we have to uh, categorize either small omphalocele or the large or giant omphalocele. So this is the giant omphalocele because the herniated contents are intestinal loops and liver while in the small omphalocele only the few bowels of the intestine will be herniated. So the clinical diagnosis for this child will be giant omphalocele. This is the image of another newborn who is also having the omphalocele. This is image of third newborn who is having the anterior abdominal wall defect and the herniated contents are intestine and you can see the defect is present on the right side of the body not midline and umbilical cord is intact and these herniated contents are not covered by the Membrana C and contains are only intestinal loops. So what will be the clinical diagnosis for this newborn? So the diagnosis is gastroschisis. Now in brief about the omphalocele and gastroschisis. Omphalocele is the midline defect. So it involves the umbilical ring. While the gastroschisis is the right side of the umbilicus defect or we can say para midline defect. When we see the covering over the herniated abdominal contain, so omphalocele covered by the membranous sac which contain the three layers, inner layer of the peritoneum and middle layer of the Watson jelly and the outer layer of the amnion. While the gastroschisis lacking any protective covering over the herniated abdominal contents and the herniated structure or contained will be bowel loops and liver or sometimes both in the omphalocele and rarely spleen can also be herniated in omphalocele while in the gastros cases only bowel loops will be herniated. Now this point intact umbilical cord it is very important and when the patient is having the ruptured omphalocele with the uh, no intact umbilical cord we will be easily differentiate from the gastros cases. So ruptured omphalocele and gastros cases sometime we may confuse. So this point will give us the clue about the is it the omphalocele or gastros cases. So intact umbilical cord will not be present in any omphalocele while it will be present in gastros cases. And about the concurrent congenital anomaly. It are associated with the 40 to 80 percent cases of omphalocele and sometimes omphalocele associated in various syndrome in various trisomies and while in gastros cases it is not frequently associated with the any other congenital anomalies. So this is about the anterior abdominal wall defects omphalocele and gastros cases. Thank you.